good afternoon again um, it's a privilege to be here and uh, i want to thank world education congress for giving me this opportunity and i would also like to thank all the global world leaders in education who have come here and uh, esteemed educators and fellow visionaries who are present here uh, and i thank you all for sharing your brilliant ideas o over this platform okay so i stand before you today as the ceo of alma better so we are an uh, leading edtech institute who, which prepares learners for a better tomorrow by upskilling them in new age technologies like ai data science software development etc so uh, today i'm going to talk about the broader theme which is affordable and sustainable education and i'll specifically focus on the higher education space so for today's uh, topic uh, and and of course i'll touch upon the uh, topic which is ai education in the post chat gpt era right um so the context for this topic has already been set the foundation has been set by dr dilip and ginger uh, and i'd like to thank them for setting up a good context to my uh, topic right so yeah so let's begin so um as an indian i take great pride in the fact that india has been making great strides uh, in terms of uh, you know enabling access to higher education over the last few years right so our um, gross enrollment ratio has moved up from around 24% to around 27% in the last few years also our eligible enrollment ratio which is probably a better indicator to measure uh, you know uh, the reach right so that has that is also comparable to some of the very developed nations out there right so all of that being said right i today i want to discuss a few challenges that plague the higher education system right and uh, more importantly the undergraduate education right so let's let's talk about a couple of these issues and uh, you know try to discuss and brainstorm on the solutions okay so um, okay so the number one issue that i want to talk about uh, is a very well known issue uh, in this industry uh, which is the gap between the industry and the academia right so <clears throat> academia is often more uh, focused on theoretical research whereas the industry demands you know practical hands on experience real world skills right uh, and it's more application based right now uh, this kind of leads to a mismatch between uh, what the students learn in the academia versus what is actually demanded in the industry right leading to poor career outcomes for these students after graduation right so we all know you know 85% of uh, uh, you know graduates kind of find it hard to get a well paying job in the industry post graduation now uh, i know there are several constraints around uh, updating the curriculum and making it more uh, relevant so you know nirf uh, you have nac you have ugc you know coming in and saying and, and they have a say in all of this right so i know it's hard but uh, the silver lining is we are seeing some positive trends emerging uh, in this uh, sector right the first thing that we are observing is universities and colleges are now increasingly partnering with edtech companies uh, specifically outcome oriented edtech companies uh, you know to uh, uh, develop more synergies and to close the gap between the academia and the industry right so uh, let let's try to understand uh, why this is happening right so uh, amongst all the edtech companies there are a few companies that provide vocational trainings in the field of uh, in the, in new age skills like ai data science etc and out of these companies right there are a good amount of outcome oriented edtech companies who are actually able to prepare the learners holistically for careers right for high growth jobs in the market right so let's let's try to understand what's going so well for these outcome oriented edtech companies uh, what are the strengths that these Uh, players have in the market right so uh, let's let's talk about uh, four things right so the first being placements so 
since these edtech companies have the DNA of a corporate rather than an institute, they almost treat placements like B2B sales. So the team has targets. The, uh, they almost adopt new age CRMs uh, you know, to manage all the leads. So it's almost uh, you know, uh, operates like a corporate. right? So that helps them achieve placements at scale as compared to you know, placements at universities and colleges, which are mostly student-led. Right? So then the second point, the second advantage is in uh, you know, redefining the curriculum. Right? So since these edtech com ed companies are not bound by any regularity authorities, right? so, and, and also they are in sound touch with the industry, they are able to you know, quickly meet the needs of the industry by you know, introducing all the new concepts that are coming out there and including in the, cur in the curriculum. Right? So um, for example, at Alma Better, uh, you know, Dr. Dilip said uh, in the morning session, right? So, we need to adopt prompt engineering into our curriculum in each and every subject. So we understood this very early. So uh, all our programs that we deliver to our students, we had adopted prompt engineering into our curriculum in all our programs, maybe six months back when this was probably not that a buzz, right? So this gives you a sense that we are kind of, uh, you know, able to bring all the new technologies very early into the curriculum because we are not regulated, right? Now, we are also able to pull in industry experts to teach the curriculum, similar to how uh, you know, this happens in the medical field. Doctors who practice come and teach, right? So, uh, so that's another advantage. The third advantage is around admissions, right? So again, since these companies have a DNA of a corporate rather than an uh, uh, you know, institute, they focus more on revenue, so they are able to crack admissions and revenue, revenue and profit are probably also very, very essential if you want to grow the whole ecosystem, right? So, uh, so they are also far superior in terms of sales and marketing, right? So that's third advantage. The fourth advantage is probably the most important one is adoption of AI in pedagogy, right? So, or, or uh, you know, um, so, so, and why this is happening? This is because these ed tech companies are founded by new age tech entrepreneurs, right? They are very agile in you know, uh, bringing in any new technology that is coming uh, out there in the market and incorporating that in the business, right? So, and also, you know, uh, we talked about how AI can personalize learning experiences for the learners, right? Uh, it can be a, a game changer, right? So it can, it can customize learning pathways for uh, many of the learners, right? So, so that's another advantage. So we talked about all the advantages that the ed techs have, right? In terms of placements, curriculum, ad admissions, and adoption of AI. Now, the second emerging trend that I want to talk about are the policy changes that's, uh, that's happening, specifically the national education policy. Um, and, and the recent changes that have come in 2023 itself, right? And I want to talk about three such changes that have come in, and these are related to the higher education in particular, right? So uh, the first change that has come in is that the undergraduate courses are now permissible to be of four years instead of three years, right? So which means that the courses which lasted for three years, for example, BSc, BCom, etc., now we have the provision to add one more year of learning. Now I don't have to explain what should be included in that uh, one extra year of learning, right? So that is where you know uh, institutes, colleges can partner with ed tech companies to include vocational training in new age skills like data science, AI, etc., into the curriculum, and uh, probably they will also be able to help. Uh, the student get superior placement outcomes once they complete the program after those four years, right? So that's one. The second change is now 40% of the curriculum can be delivered online, right? So this is another signal. EdTechs are you know, far superior in handling things online. Third is uh, AI software will now be utilized to facilitate learning. So this has come from the government, right? So now that I have talked about all the strengths of the ed tech companies as well as the you know signals that are coming in from the government. If you just take a moment to think about what 
might happen if we combine these two uh, you know uh, concepts right and think about these two in, in unison uh, it's probably now very much clear why universities and colleges need to partner more and more with ed tech companies to you know provide superior outcomes for all the students right and i i believe this is probably the most sustainable way to make education more relevant uh, for all the students right now so that's that was my uh, uh, first uh, issue that i want to talk about and the pos possible solutions that can happen and now i want to focus on the second issue uh, and uh, i'm going to talk about that uh, today which is around affordability we all know that the tuition fees is on the rise for all the institutes right so i know there might be several solutions to this right so ginger touched upon how we can leverage tech to uh, you know uh, make education affordable and democratize education for all uh, we all know that uh, there can be you know more and more public institutions which might come in uh, we also need funds from the government to make uh, these things more affordable but i want to talk about two probably not heard of solutions um, which can help uh, you know in making education affordable and these are probably strategic solutions these do not require tech or uh, or government funds right so the first solution that uh, i have uh, you know came up with is introducing income contingent loans right so so what are income contingent loans so they are a type of loan wherein the students only pay after they get placed above a certain income right so if you know uh, and, and this mode of financing is only possible if the colleges and the institutes have a good track record of placement right only then the you know uh, financial partners would be able to finance these kind of loans right so uh, which in turn means that you have to get good placements which in turn again means that you have your curriculum has to be in industry relevant right so this is the first one and then the second topic that i want to touch upon which uh, you know may lead to uh, uh, affordability in higher education is introducing work integrated programs i know uh, many of the colleges are already doing this in partnership with uh, edtechs so the concept is very simple here so if we can teach the students industry relevant skills in their first year itself they can start doing internships from the second year onwards right now that means that they can uh, finance their own education from the second year onwards right and now that nep has allowed 40% of the curriculum to be delivered online and also permitted students to have gap in between their under graduation years this opens up a whole new era of possibilities on how you can, we can design programs uh, in the undergraduate uh, you know uh, uh, sector so so that's my two cents on uh, affordability now um, in conclusion i would like to say that the path to affordable and sustainable education is not easy at all right so it it requires a collective effort shared vision and resolute commitment right so uh, we cannot turn a blind eye towards the problems uh, of relevancy in higher education that we have been observing for probably more than a decade now right education is the foundation upon which societies thrive innovation flourishes and dreams take flight right so <clears throat> however like for far too long the barriers to quality education have stood tall casting a shadow upon countless young minds but together we can transform the world one educated mind at a time thank you